What's going on guys and welcome to the next crack a pack episode today We are opening up a pack of homelands not something you get to see every day uh, But there's really not much value in this set either uh, the most expensive card in the set right now according to card kingdom uh, Is it $12 wall of kelp? Uh, and then just under that we have didgeridoo at 650 uh, as well as uh, Coscoon Falls, I believe I'm saying that correctly uh, Merchant Scroll is also a great card in here. Uh, it's actually not at rare. I believe it's just a common. Yeah uh, I think we actually pulled one last time we opened a homelands pack. So hopefully we get something interesting uh, I don't actually know where the rare is in this pack So I do apologize if I miss it We will of course go over every card though and then uh, actually look at it from a pack one pick one perspective so uh, if we were in draft and we were trying to figure out our first pick, we will basically figure that out to the best of our ability. I am not great at drafting, uh, so I may get things wrong. Uh, and by all means, if you disagree with me, just let me know in the comment section below. Perfectly happy to talk about that. So, our first card here is Folk of Anne Hava. It is a 1-1 one, one for 1 green. If assigned as a blocker, it gets plus 2 plus 0 until end of turn. Uh, so obviously a great blocker, but it doesn't really encourage being aggressive, which I think is interesting. Uh, I like this card as a one drop. I think it's fine. It's like you don't necessarily look to play this very often, but if you needed to play one or two as a one drop slot, uh, I think I would be perfectly happy with that. So not necessarily great, but okay. Um, Hungry Mist is a 6-2 for 2 and 2 green. During your upkeep, pay 2 green or bury Hungry Mist. I like that they say bury. Uh, this is much more of a finisher kind of card. I think this is probably what I would want. It does die a little bit easier, obviously. It's only got two toughness, so that's pretty low, but it is only a four drop. And yes, you do have to pay the two green on upkeep, but like, it seems pretty good. So I think for now, that's at the top. Uh, Trade Caravan is a 1-1 one, one for one white. During your upkeep, put a currency counter on Trade Caravan, and then you can pay zero and remove two currency counters from the caravan to untap target basic land. Use this ability only during any opponent's upkeep. That is very weird. Uh, I don't like this card really at all. Uh, I feel like it's just very, very strange. Uh, the fact that it's during your opponent's upkeep just doesn't make too much sense to me. So I do not like that. Uh, Singear Bats is a 1-2 for 1 and 2 black. It has flying. Uh, whenever a creature is put into the graveyard the same turn... Uh, the same turn, Singear Bats, Singear Bats, wow, damaged it, put a plus one, plus one counter on the bats. Uh, this seems pretty good. I don't think it's amazing because you're not going to be dealing much damage with it. So you kind of just have to pick and choose your blocks carefully or something like that. Like you kind of have to work around it. Uh, but I do think this has some potential upside. I don't like it more than the mist though. I will say that. Uh, dry spell is a sorcery for one and a black deals one damage to each creature and each player very powerful theoretically uh, obviously as we've seen there's a lot of low cost creatures that are at one one uh, and so this probably actually is not a bad card I feel like you'd probably be able to hit some stuff with it at the very least uh, and then of course you hit each player for a damage that's not amazing but sometimes you could get lucky and win a game that way so I like this I don't like it more than the mist still though uh, coral reef is too blue for an enchantment. When it comes into play, put four polyp counters on it. Uh, you can pay zero and sacrifice an island to put two polyp counters on Coral Reef, and then pay a blue and tap target blue creature you control and remove a polyp counter from Coral Reef to put a plus zero plus one counter on any target creature. This seems like a lot of work for not much payoff. Um, so, especially in draft, you want to have more power uh, and just adding toughness doesn't seem that great to me. Uh, yes, it can get around some burn spells. That's worth noting. Uh, but this is a lot of work for that. I don't really like that. Uh, sea Troll is two and a blue for a 2-1. You can pay one blue and regenerate it. Use this ability only during a turn in which Sea Troll blocked a blue creature or a blue creature blocked Sea Troll. Uh, again, very specific. Obviously, these are older sets, so it tends to be that way. Uh, but that's so specific. I feel like that's just not worth it. Uh, already it's a 2-1 for 3, which is a little bit off. Uh, but then on top of that, obviously, that's like a very limiting ability. So I do not like that. Uh, Anaba Ancestor is a 1-1 one, one for 1 and a red. Uh, you can tap it and target Minotaur gets plus 1, plus 1 until end of turn. To me, this pack is a pretty clear Hungry Mist. Uh, that being said, I do like Dry Spell and the Bats as well. And honestly, this card isn't terrible. 
uh, but I don't necessarily, I would not want to first pick that. So uh, it's pretty clear for me, Hungry Mist. I don't know if that's the rare, honestly. I apologize if I am wrong on that, but uh, it's definitely the card I would pick. By all means, if you disagree, let me know in the comment section below. Uh, but I am going to wrap up this episode. Guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. As always, please make sure to subscribe. Stay up to date on all of our content. We've got tons of it for you. Uh, but with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. I will see you in the next episode.